The period of persecution of the Jews under the National Socialists was probably the darkest time in Europe. And while we know a lot about the Holocaust and the deportation of Jews within Europe, there is one chapter of history that is little reported. We are talking about the Madagascar Plan, a dark, almost surreal chapter in the history of Nazi Germany. In the late 1930s and early 40s, the architects of the Third Reich drew up this cruel plan, which envisaged the mass deportation of Europe's Jewish population to the island of Madagascar. There they were to serve as slaves for the Germans for all eternity. But the plan went even further. So what was this inhumane plan all about, what did it look like in detail and why was it never implemented in reality? We look at all these questions in today's video. In the turbulent years before the outbreak of the Second World War, the National Socialist rulers began to look for radical solutions to their so-called Jewish question. The Madagascar Plan, as it later became known, emerged during this phase of growing brutality and the Nazi regime's expansionist ambitions. However, the idea of deporting Jews to Madagascar was not entirely new, it had already been discussed in various anti-Semitic circles in the previous century. The idea of deporting Jews to Madagascar was first put forward by the anti-Semitic German politician of the Prussian Conservative Party, Paul Anton de Lagarde. As early as the year 1885, he proposed bringing all Eastern European Jews to the island of Madagascar in order to better control them there. And even at the beginning of the century, this idea was repeatedly taken up and intensively discussed by anti-Semites from all over Europe. The well-known British fascist and anti-Semite Arnold Lease formulated the following relatively early on, a home must be found for the Jews, the best place is Madagascar. For this, France and the local natives should receive full compensation from Jewish funds. Once in Madagascar, or, if this island cannot be made partially available to them elsewhere, Jews should be forbidden to leave this territory on pain of death. There is no other way. And it was on this breeding ground of these early fascists that the ideology of the National Socialists in Germany later bore fruit. The primary goal was to solve the so-called Jewish problem and the most promising solution seemed to be to deport and forcibly resettle all European Jews. Numerous plans were developed and several destinations for such a forced resettlement were under discussion. Countries such as Ecuador, Colombia and Venezuela were on the shortlist. Adolf Eichmann, who later became one of the central figures of the Holocaust, was commissioned in the year 1938 to examine the various plans and evaluate them in the context of the so-called foreign policy solution to the Jewish question. And he saw the Madagascar plan as the most promising and developed it further. Hermann Göring and Adolf Hitler also quickly showed great enthusiasm for the idea. The details of the plan were finally formulated largely by Franz Rademacher, an official in the Foreign Office of the Third Reich. Rademacher, a well-known anti-Semite, developed the plan as a radical, final solution to the Jewish question which envisaged the complete removal of the Jewish population from Europe. He saw three different ways of achieving this goal. Firstly, the banishment and forced deportation of all Jews from Europe, with Madagascar in particular seen as the most promising destination. Secondly, only Jews from Western and Central Europe were to be shipped to Madagascar. While all Eastern European Jews were to be deported to Lublin, where they were to be taken hostage for the good behavior of the USA. And thirdly, deportation to Palestine was also on the table. However, Rademacher quickly rejected this option. He feared that the Jews could rule the entire world from a so-called a second Rome. But what did the plan look like in detail? At the heart of the Madagascar plan was the monstrous idea of the mass resettlement of the Jewish population from European countries to Madagascar, an island in the Indian Ocean that was a French colony at the time. This project was not only logistically unprecedented, but was also characterized by its inhumane nature. On the 2nd of July in the year 1940, as the German victory over France loomed, Rademacher published the final plan under the title, The Jewish Question in the Peace Treaty. Initially, this envisaged a peace treaty with England and France. This was because the British Navy ruled the seas and the French ruled Madagascar. It therefore provided for the French Vichy regime to hand over control of Madagascar to Germany in a peace treaty. Germany was to be given the right to establish military air and naval bases on Madagascar. The 25,000 Europeans from the island, the majority of whom were French, were to leave the islands in return in order to lay the foundations for the mass emigration of Jews. His plan envisaged the deportation of a total of 4 million European Jews, later there was talk of 5 to 6 million. The implementation of the project was to be financed from the Jewish assets of the respective home countries. 
The SS was to be used for the implementation as well as the Chancellery of the Führer for the coordination of the transports. And a police governor appointed by Himmler was to rule the island for all time. While some may think that this plan might have saved many lives, it must be made clear that the plan is now assessed quite clearly by historians. As the historian Magnus Breckken put it quite aptly, anyone who thought this plan through to the end, had to come to the conclusion that deportation to Madagascar in this form was tantamount to a death sentence. And so it seemed more economical for the Nazis to eliminate the Jews in Europe right away. However, a number of other influences also ultimately led to the failure of the plan. For one thing, there was never a peace treaty with Great Britain and the dominance of the British naval forces made it seem impossible to transport millions of people to Madagascar. And the French Vichy regime refused to cede the island. There were ideas for a violent conquest of the island. However, in view of the preparations for the major strike against the Soviet Union, no troops were available for such an operation. And when the British landed on Madagascar in May of the year 1942 and secured the island, the plan became obsolete. For in the year 1942, further problems arose, as the military and political reality in Europe had changed. With the failure of the German forces to achieve a quick victory over the Allies and the intensifying warfare, it became clear that the implementation of such a plan would be impossible in terms of both time and resources. In particular, however, the logistical impossibility of deporting millions of people over long distances actually caused the plan to fail from the outset. If you look at the old manuscripts, you can see that the plan was not just a pipe dream, but was planned with incredible seriousness and precision. Today we can assume that if the Nazis had held out for longer or even defeated the Allies, it would very probably have been taken up again. In many respects, however, the Madagascar plan was also a forerunner of the Holocaust. It was characterized by a total disregard for human life and fundamental rights, with people being expelled on the basis of their ethnicity. In this context, the National Socialist a solution to the Jewish question quickly transformed from a theory of deportation into a policy of systematic mass murder. The Holocaust, which was subsequently realized, led to the deaths of six million Jews, an act of unimaginable cruelty and brutality that challenged humanity itself. Although the Madagascar plan is not necessarily known to the general public today, it occupies a significant position in historiography. It is often used as evidence of the Nazis' early intention to exterminate the Jewish community, even if the methods have changed over time. It is proof that the Holocaust was not a sudden event, but a result of a long, staggered escalation of discrimination and hatred. And that the genocide of the Jews on an industrial scale had already been decided at the highest level in the year 1939. And although it was ultimately never implemented, the Madagascar plan stands as a chilling testament to the extreme brutality and dehumanization that characterized Nazi policy and as a precursor to the unbelievable atrocities that were to follow in the Holocaust.